What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel is something a little different. Me and Homestead J, if you haven't checked his channel out already, you need to go here, check it out. Uh, we are going to do a little collaboration video today on 10 things that you need to do for a preseason checklist. So I hope that you guys enjoy and stay tuned. All right, guys, so let's get down to the, the meat and potatoes here. Let's get down to the real reason why we're here today. Uh, I think that we're going to do uh, five each. I think I'm going to let Homestead Jay go first. Um, he'll do five preseason checklist things, and then I'll do five. You know what? I'm being kind of lazy today. Uh, let's let him do six, and I'll do four. So we're going to go over some uh, just tips and tricks um, to, to check out your wood boiler before you uh, start it up for the season and uh, some things to check to make sure you're on the up and up before that first fire starts. I have already started my wood burner, so uh, Jay's going to take it off with some stuff before you start uh, burning. And uh, then I'll wrap it up with some stuff that uh, I do after my first fire. So let's go ahead and kick it on over to Homestead J and uh, you take it over, bud. Thanks, Devin. I'll, uh, I'll take this next one here. But the first thing we're going to cover today is just a visual inspection. Um, some of these are pretty far out from your house. You know, you don't really, I walk by it all the time, but you know, a lot of times you don't, uh, you don't, you know, make contact with it during the year. So we're just going to do a quick visual, make sure nothing's out of the ordinary, making sure all our hardware looks good. There's no, uh, you want to look for nests of some sort because generally, uh, bees and stuff will, uh, make their way but anyways just do a quick visual i know i got some damage there but it's no big deal but everything uh everything looks good looks like a limb or something fell off and hit this from one of these maples but anyways that's number one is a quick visual. all right guys the next one here we're gonna look at is the water level see what you have here is i know it's probably tough to see on camera between the lighting but you have a little spigot valve here and a clear clear tube you have a full line up here. Hopefully you can see that, but anyways, you open this valve. Did you see the water? Hopefully you can. The water is at the full mark. You usually check this, and then once you shut this, there's a little one-way ball valve that drains the water in the tube out. These units, see, you can see the water there draining out. These units have about 300 gallon capacity, so draining that little bit of water isn't gonna hurt anything. So that's the second thing you do, is you check uh, the water level. Obviously when you start running it, you're gonna check it periodically, but that's the second thing you check. So the third thing you wanna check is your water um, quality. Um, the water in this machine has an anti-corrosion inhibitor in it, obviously because you don't, don't want to rust out the machine. In order to do this, we need to run the machine for 48 hours prior. So I'll put a link once I film it. We're going to do a water test after the first 48 hours of operation. So that'll be uh, the third thing is to check your water quality. All right, so the next thing you want to check, um, sorry if it's windy, is you want to check the chimney. So this little uh, clip there, um, this is a, yeah, this is a quarter turn and remove. Um, you just kind of want to see what's going on now. I know this chimney is only one uh, season old. So there's just some, uh, looks like bird droppings. But anyways, we're gonna go, uh, I don't have a flashlight on me, but you just want to check the bore inside condition of the chimney. So let's go ahead and, uh, Climb up there and uh, check that out. Whoa, buddy, the top rung. Ah, oh, man, safety first, safety first. The keyboard warrior is going to love that one. Oh, man. All right, so the part of the inspection, you want to inspect your uh, chimney cap. This is a rain ban, and what happens is if the rain comes down at an angle, it just helps prevent uh, rain from getting down into your new chimney. Uh, believe it or not, this is new. Just ran it uh, one season last year, so it's got some buildup on there, but it's it's fine to uh, it's fine to start the machine. I clean this uh, as it builds up. 
So you just want to make sure that it's solid, that all these straps are in place. A lot of people don't run caps at all because they don't want to clean it, but it depends on uh, user preference. As we get into the heating season, I'll do a video uh, on how to clean the chimney. I usually clean it, I think, once a month, give or take, depending on what I'm burning. If I'm burning a lot of pine, I'll clean it once a month. If I'm burning a lot of hardwoods, maybe six weeks or so. But anyways, uh, we will uh, cover that in a future video. Next thing we're gonna check is the uh, door damper, which is under this cover here. So these are just some, uh, some self tappers. You can just loosen up here. The unit should be off anytime you remove this cover. So you remove this cover here, uh, and then you can see this is all your, your mechanism here. This is your voltage. Uh, there's a little inline fuse here, but when the unit calls for heat, it'll lift this door damper and it'll let air in. When the um, unit's done calling for heat, it'll shut it. You'll hear that distinctive ping. Uh, but one thing you want to do is you want to put a little bit of WD-40 lube on this solenoid here because this actuates multiple times a day. So let's go ahead and get the silicone and we'll be right, all right back. All right, so what we're going to do Squirt a little bit of PB blaster on there, and we're gonna just give that uh, just give that some lubrication um, up and down. Now the next thing on the list um, is going to be cleaning this draft door and cleaning this surface under there. So let's go ahead and pop this damper off, and we'll show you how that's done. All right, so we got these two bolts out. Um, I did last year. I have a video on putting a new door, and this is a new door. But I put never sees on these bolts because um, there's a lot of heat behind there. They came loose right away. I swear by that stuff. So, anyways, we're gonna pull this right off. And as you can see, the creosote and soot and all that stuff builds up on the door damper. So we want to start fresh. So we're gonna clean that with the wire brush, and we're gonna clean this with the wire brush. So let's go ahead and do that. Guys, creosote is no joke, uh, especially using, we're going to use an electric Makita, uh, Makita drill with a little uh, adhesive pad on it. Wear your proper safety equipment, please. Um, this stuff is nasty. You don't want to be breathing this crap All in. Alright, so as far as maintenance, we cleaned up this seat with the uh, Makita there. And we cleaned up the underneath of the damper, so we got a nice seal. This is what runs the whole machine when it calls for, this is the solenoid here, when it calls for uh, heat. It'll open this damper, let some air in. So that's all cleaned up, Fire, uh, hit with the brush. It's a pretty good seal. As you can hear, it's pretty, uh, as I tap on it. All right, so we're covered in creosote, but uh, <laughs> other than that, we had, uh, it's been a good day. That's pretty much it until you run it. The, the, there's other things to check when you run it, but anyways, I'm gonna ship it back over to my uh, buddy, Devin Durbin. He's got his running now. He's gonna take you through the last couple things you wanna check once you get, uh, once you get the machine running. So appreciate you guys watching. I'll uh, send you over there and we'll uh, see you in a bit. All right, guys, we're back over at the Durbin compound. So let's go ahead and go through uh, the four things that I have left to cover. So uh, one thing I think we should go over is the door seal and make sure you're getting a good seal around the door. Excess oxygen that gets into the firebox during a fire uh, will allow it to burn more. Uh, you burn more wood and you don't even need to. So one thing that I use is a piece of paper. Um, you can use an, old, uh, use an old bill or something like that, just a regular piece of paper. I'm gonna spin you around. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it um, and, and uh, how that goes. All right, piece of cake here. Just open your door. Um, you can put the piece of paper in the door um, and then latch it back down. And then you should be able to pull your piece of paper out. So do this all the way around your door and make sure your door seal is good. Obviously, if you have a fire um, in the firebox, uh, you don't want to leave your piece of paper in there too long and uh, catch it on fire. <laughs> All right, the next step that uh, I go through is a internal combustion chamber uh, uh, pre-inspection. Um, I recorded this the other day before I fired up, so let's kick it on over to that video that I recorded a couple of days ago, uh, and I'll show you exactly what I look for inside the wood burner. Okay guys, so we're inside the firebox now. 
um, I've got a little portable light here um, casting some light for us and there's quite an echo. So in these central boilers, um, there is a beveled pan in here, um, and you can imagine every seam is welded. So what we want to do is take a close-up inspection of everything, make sure the seams look good, make sure that there's not um, any rust going on. Um, this is obviously a bent seam here. Um, as you can see, I'm wiping the oil, um, and so it is a coated surface. Um, but you just want to make sure, especially in the corners, that everything is um, uh, not building up like this. This is a spot I need to knock off here of just some old coals. Uh, but for the most part, just inspect the inside of your firebox. Uh, you have some creosote build up. It happens. Um, some people choose to scrape this completely clean. Um, I choose to just leave it to let it burn off. Um, People will have their opinions about it, but nonetheless, it's not that big of a deal. So over here, you're inspecting your, your uh, seams. Just make sure that nothing is caked up, building up, um, and you don't have any uh, crazy rust spots. So stuff like this, where the coating has burnt off, you know, uh, just keep an eye on it. It's just surface rust. If you start to see it really pitting, then you might have an issue. All right. So next up on the chopping block is the temperature sensor. Uh, uh, what do you want to call it? I'd inspect your temperature sensor, your temperature probe that is inside the thermal well. So this is something that you want to check. I made a video about this uh, the other day, so we're going to kick it over to that video. Guys, how I initially figured this out is I came outside this morning to a boiler that was spewing over and uh, boiling over. So what had happened is uh, after a couple years, it started to make bad connection up here and boom, it was uh, basically jumping in between, you know, 185, something like that. You know, it, it was jumping in between a bunch of different temperatures and ultimately keeping the draft door wide open. And then I had a boil over. So I'm now just running the pump um, on uh, just running it so that it will cool it down but uh, that was my problem here is my well was not making good connection all right so directly behind my wires where I just pulled out here is the temperature probe here okay you have a separate uh, plug for something else down the road um, if you were to put something else here whatever uh, they give you a backup so this temperature probe literally just pulls out of just pulls out of the well. This is in a thermal well. So literally you just pull your probe out like this. And hopefully that focus is okay. Um, so yeah, it's literally a hole and you literally slide your, slide your probe out, slide it in. Now you will wanna coat this with something that will keep it from corroding. So keep in mind that this is a different material than uh, what is in here in the thermal well. So you do want to keep something like uh, anti-seize or some uh, soft set, uh, some, some uh, thread compound, something to keep this lubed up um, so that it does not uh, corrode in here and then it's stuck for good and you have to replace the thermal well. You do not want to have to replace the thermal well because then you open up your water jacket, if you get what I'm saying there. So this making poor connection inside here can make your, your boiler have erratic temperature readings on your controller. All right, next up, we're gonna go inside. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you how I check the pipes on the inside, make sure that water is flowing correctly and you don't have any air bubbles. So let's go inside, I'll show you how I do that. All right guys, we're down here after first fire. So what you wanna do is you want to make sure that you're getting hot water on the return side of your system. So the hot water is coming in here, going over to the heat exchanger and then coming back. So you wanna make sure that you're getting hot water on your return side. So as your burner's warming up, you need to make sure that you're getting hot water on the return side. This makes sure that you don't have any water or any air in the lines and getting poor circulation. Make sure that your circulating pump is running correctly. So um, be sure to check your inlet and your outlet. If you have a thermometer set up, I can check my temps on both my uh, you can see here as it focuses my temperature on the inlet side and the outlet side uh, or vice versa. This is the inlet side 
in the outlet side, blase, blase. So you can check your temperatures there. Um, I also have a small uh, Vega uh, temp sensor here on my hot water heater. So obviously just uh, visual inspection to make sure all of your connections are tight, not rubbing on anything crazy and not dripping uh, and make sure everything's on the up and up down here inside the house. So let's go back on outside. All right, guys, well, that wraps up today's video. I hope that you learned something from this pre-inspection checklist um, and things to just check on on your burner. Uh, keep up with it on a regular basis. So I hope to see you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into, and uh, definitely go over and uh, subscribe to my channel and Homestead Jay's channel as he was an excellent help on today's video. So I hope to see you guys in the future. If you're subscribers and you've been around, I appreciate your loyalty and we'll see you guys in the next video.